A famous French mathematician called Fourier in the 1820s came up with a very important finding. He said, all repetitive waves can be made up from a weighted sum of sinusoids. This is his formula here. Any repetitive wave, no matter how complicated it is, can be expressed as a sum of sines and or cosines, sinusoids, with perhaps uh, a zero frequency so-called DC term out here. Not always necessary. But any shape, now any complicated shape, as long as it repeats itself, can be made up the sum of sines and or cosines. This is the Fourier series and this is Fourier analysis. So there's something very special about sines and cosines, as we said. They're used as the basis functions. Now they each comprise a single frequency and each of them is orthogonal or orthonormal to each other. That is, sine x is orthogonal to sine 2x, is orthogonal to sine 3x, is orthogonal to sine 4x, etc., which are all orthogonal to the cosine functions too. So that they're all mutually perpendicular or mutually independent of each other. Note that the sums, you only have to use integers here. So you're using sine x, sine 2x, sine 3x. When n is equal to 1, sine x, it's called the first harmonic or the fundamental frequency. When n is equal to 2, you get the second harmonic. When n is equal to 3, the third harmonic and so on. These terms in front of the sines or cosines, these are the weights. It's a weighted sum. These weights are called the Fourier coefficients and they tell you how much of each harmonic we're using you know, to build up a wave if we're doing Fourier synthesis or how much is there if we're breaking down a wave doing Fourier analysis. So if we look at the next page in the book, we see here that a repetitive square wave, for example, can be made up from a series of sines. You know, you would use this sinusoid, the fundamental, the first harmonic here, a sinusoid of the same repeat distance as the square wave that we are trying to synthesize or trying to analyze. So we would use the first harmonic and then we would use the third harmonic. We'd add in a bit of the third harmonic, n is equal to 3, and that would give rise to this shape, you know, which is not a square wave, but it's starting to look like one. And then if you add in a little bit of the fifth harmonic and a little bit of the seventh harmonic, and the ninth harmonic, and the eleventh, and so on, you'll start to build up the square. And it'd do the same thing on any shape. This is a sawtooth built up, a repetitive sawtooth built up from sinusoids. Now, if we go to this falstad.com site, the link is there in the docx file in module four. Uh, we look at a sinusoid, a pure sinusoid, a single frequency. You know, similarly, a cosine, a single frequency too. So these are pure, these are the basis functions from which all others can be built. And th th this is the frequency spectrum. If we look now at a square, you can see a square is complicated. It's made up from a lot of frequencies. It's made up from the fundamental frequency or the first harmonic. And then a bit of the third harmonic is added to that. There's a bit of the fifth harmonic there, a bit of the seventh, a bit of the ninth. Smaller and smaller 
weights here, smaller and smaller Fourier coefficients. So we're plotting here the size of the Fourier coefficient against the frequency. This is the frequency spectrum. So we saw only only integer values of n and the size of these here tells you how much of each of them is needed to build a square wave. And we see we don't quite get a square. There's always a little bit of ringing at the ends. But this is the best we can do by adding in more and more terms. And we see we use the third, the, the odd harmonics only, the first and the third and the fifth and the seventh. And the sizes of each go one, a third, a fifth, a seventh. So the Fourier coefficients are one, a third, a fifth, a seventh, applied to all the odd harmonics. You can even hear what this sound looks like by pressing sound here, pressing it on a sinusoid. I can't do it here because I'm using a different microphone, but you can, on your microphone, listen to a square wave. A question is, why do we not use the even harmonics? n is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And I'll leave you to think about that one. If we look at the uh, at module 4, in Canvas, um, we can look down here at the Fourier series of a square wave and see we build up or break down a square wave by using the third harmonics. And these are the sizes, one, a third, a fifth, a seventh, a ninth, and so on. So let me go back to... Um, this here, Polestad, that's the square. Um, we can look at a sawtooth in the same way and look at the coefficients that are required here. Um, the first harmonic, this time the second harmonic, but negatively, that is, we're subtracting a little bit of the second harmonic, adding a bit of the third, subtracting a bit of the fourth, and so on. We're using both the odd and the even. We're using all the harmonics. So our Fourier coefficients to our one minus a half plus a third minus a quarter plus a fifth minus a sixth, and so on. And again, we can look at... Um, look at the GIF file of that here. And we see um, all the harmonics are being used and they're one a half, a third. They're actually one minus a half plus a third minus a quarter. But this is just plotting the magnitude of the Fourier coefficients. We can also um, look back to, oops, where am I? Look back to the modules, module four, and download this executable file. I can find it. In module four, download this file here. Um, and if you open it up, it looks like this here. It allows us to synthesize particular shapes. This is a square tooth. Not that many terms are being used. The terms are here, 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 and here. The first harmonic, the third, the fifth, and the seventh. And these slider bars allow us to change how much of each of them we're using. You know, and you can change each of these independently of each other. See, if you change them to a different value, you get a different wave. But in order to get a square wave, you have to have one, a third, a fifth, a seventh, and so on. 
So the Fourier series recapping then the Fourier series says every repetitive shape no matter how complicated it is can be built up from sinusoids and you should experiment a little bit with this program here.